So I've done a lot of web scraping using Python, but I thought it'd be cool to do a basic web scraper using Node and JavaScript to see what it's like and to see if there's any benefits from using the other language. So what I've got on my screen now is I have done npm init y, just like this, which is initializing our Node package. And you need to have Node installed, so if you don't have that, you'll need to install Node as well. With the two packages that we're going to be using, we're going to be using Axios and Cheerio, which is basically our requests and our beautiful soup, pretty much. So you would do npm install Axios and Cheerio, just like that. I've already got them installed, so that's just going to run through really quickly. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually tell our program to use Axios and we need to basically import them in if you like. And we do that by using the require keyword here, Axios. And this is going to basically give us access to these from within our project files. So let's do Cheerio and again put that there. So now we have these available to us. The next thing that I would normally do would be to set up a URL. And I'm going to be using this Amazon website, which you may or may not have heard of before, amazon.co.uk slash dp slash. And I'm just going to grab the ASIM from here, just like that. Now, just to check that this is working fine, I'm going to do console log the URL, which is like printing it out. And then we go up and run our file with node and then the name of the file. There we go, that works fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get Axios to go out and actually make a request to the server, this URL, and get the data back. So to do that, we use Axios because we've imported it up the top here. And then we say URL. If you've ever done any web scraping of Amazon before, you'll know that you need to give it a real user agent. Otherwise, you just get stopped at the front door. And if you don't know what your user agent is or one that you can use, just go to Google and type in what is my user agent and it will pop right up and you can copy that whole string into your code to get past the gates, so to speak. So for in Axios, what we do is we type in our square, our curly brackets, headers. Then we want to say that this is a an array. So we'll do user with a capital U, user dash agent. And then we need to paste in our user agent. I've got mine over here. Let's just copy that and stick that in. What we're going to do now is we're going to go onto a new line and we're going to do the dot then keyword. Now this is the promise from Axios and this is basically like going to get the information and we can then work with it here. So I'm saying the response that we get back, we want to do something with, we want to save it all into a variable. So I'm going to say const HTML. We want to save all of it because it's going to be HTML data that comes back. And this is the response dot data. And now we can pass that along to Cheerio. So I'm going to do const and the dollar sign. Now this is like the standard. This is like using soup in beautiful soup is equal to Cheerio dot load the HTML here that we've just pulled out. So we're basically giving Cheerio, which is our passing program, which is going to go through and let us access the selectors through the HTML. Using that, we're giving it the actual raw data that we just got back from Axios. So what I'm going to do now, and what I do quite often in Python, is I basically create a dictionary or an array, and then we basically just load that up with the information that we get. So let's go ahead and do our const, and we'll do product info. And then we can say equal to our square brackets, and then our curly brackets, because this is going to be a list. And we want to say our title and our price and also the ratings count uh, or just ratings will be fine now in here is where we want to actually put our css selectors for the data that we want to store into these plates of these uh, parts of our array so we're going to use the dollar sign let me use our brackets and then our quote marks and this is where our selector is going to go so i'm just going to copy this down so you're going to get the idea now we're going to pop over to the website. I'm going to use the inspect element tool. And I'm going to click on the inspect an element and we're going to get the title. Now getting the title from Amazon is always really nice and easy. It's usually in this span with an ID of product title. I like to use CSS selectors. It's kind of just what I learned first and what I know. But XPath is also very powerful and customizable too. So if you prefer to use XPath, by all means, use the XPath, or if you want to follow along with me, I'm going to use CSS Select. So it was span with an ID, which is a hashtag product title. 
Now to get the text from this, we do dot text just like that. Now this will actually come back with a load of white space around it. So what's really cool is we can just do dot trim. So this is just like dot strip within Python. So let's find the price now. And same thing again, let's go here. Now the price is gonna be a bit more difficult in this case because, so there's multiple of this span class A off screen uh, lying around in this HTML. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reference it a bit closer in and I'm gonna go for this span tag first and then ask for uh, that. So we can use this uh, attribute here because it's got the value of price, which makes it quite neat. So let's copy that. And we do a span with a class. Actually, we don't need the class, do we? Because it's an attribute. So we do span tag with this attribute in it, which was equal to price. What we can do now is if we just hit a space and then do span dot a dash off screen, that's actually going to go go here first and then find this within that. So this dot a off screen is this one here. So we're basically just referencing the trial. What we're going to do here is we're going to do dot first, because if we don't do this, what we'll find is that it will return a list and we'll just get a list of data out, which is not what we want. In beautiful soup, you have find and find all. Find all will always return a list and find will always return the first one that it find, the first one that it finds. And within requests HTML, which is another Python library that I use quite a lot for web scraping, you can use first is equal to true. And that's very similar here. So you do dot first, then we can do dot text. And we might as well just throw in dot trim whilst we're here just to catch it all, just in case there is extra around this case. So we don't need the, we need the commas here, not the uh, semicolon. So the next thing is the ratings. Let's just quickly cover over and grab that. And that's nice and easy span ID of this. So that's not gonna be too difficult at all. Span of that. And again, I'm going to do dot first because I know that there are others on this as well. Dot text, dot trim. So we lose the white space. Let's copy this then and we'll do console dot log out our product. So now if I've done this correct, when we run our node scraper.js, we should be presented back with some nice JSON looking data, except we haven't because I've missed out the brackets around my dot text which means it wasn't gonna work properly. Let's try that again. There we go. So you can see that we're actually returning a list of arrays in this case, and we have our information all here. So if you look at this, it's pretty similar, right? You, you import the programs, the, uh, the modules that you need, you set your URL, you ask for the data, you load it into your parser, you construct it however you like. You didn't have to do it this way, it's just the way that I did it. And then you print it out to the screen or do something else with it. So I'm just gonna zoom out a couple here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this and we're gonna go here and then we'll have this on the other side as well at the same time. So this is my Python version of exactly the same thing. So you'll see that we have our URL, we have our request with our user agent this is our soup variable. And then here is the information that we've asked for, which we print out. So if I run this, you'll see we get basically the same information back as we did here. So which do you like best? They look quite similar really, but I suppose we're only doing a really simple HTML web scraper. Uh, if you like this one, maybe I'll go ahead and I'll do one using a headless browser, which is one way of using of uh, rendering JavaScript pages for when you don't have access to the HTML as easily as this one. For me, I think I'll stick with Python. We've got Scrapey after all, which is a full featured Python web scraping framework, which if you're interested in learning, you're probably gonna wanna check out this video here.